to another virtual happy hour. It's with me, Doug. We're at a secret location. And so lucky number 13, we're celebrating with no other than an accent. We have some beautiful accents as well. I want to thank Biocon Spirits for providing us with this gorgeous accent drip and with some of their products, which we're going to talk about throughout the episode. We're going to be doing all kinds of drinks. We're doing it later than usual. Again, lucky number 13, want to do something special. And so we're just going to keep really just uh, focus on just making great drinks, giving you great dialogue about it. We also have special guests making drinks list today. Morgan Hill from Gulf Breeze Winery. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank Branch Out Spirits for doing another virtual happy hour. All right. And so, yeah, so absent. This is a very old way of drinking. This is what the artists and, and musicians and and Thespians used to drink for years. They can trace back wormwood, the, uh, the main one of the main ingredients in absinthe, all the way back to like the first the first writings about medicine for the most part. And so this is going to be provided by Botcon Spirits. This is their emerald absinthe. We also have their opal absinthe. And so we're going to do a traditional way. We're going to start off in a little bit with the traditional way of making absinthe, which is with this beautiful. Drip has some handcrafted ice from fat ice. It's going to be filled with uh, filtered water, and it's also going to be with these gorgeous absent crossware and absent sugar catch. Or what do you, what do you call those? Spoon, spoon? absent spoons. Absent spoon. We got some. <laughs> that look cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Why right not? So absent, littered in history. Morgan's going to talk about some of that stuff when he gets behind here too. We're going to be popping around, working on a bunch of drinks. Uh, the thing about absinthe is it has this entire, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Bad rap, if you will. Oh Yeah, it has a very, um, the reputation it has is kind of infamous, would, yeah. I guess would be a good way to say it. For sure. It's been banned for years. And the ban was actually released in the States in 2007. The first... Uh, distillery to come over and start selling their absinthe was Lucid, actually, which is produced in the Colombia Distillery. Fun fact, the Colombia Distillery was designed by George F. Bell, Eiffel Tower, and Statue of Liberty. So, and Lucid, it gets a bad rap as well for a lot of fans of absinthe, but for introductory level absinthe, I think it's actually a good way to go. It's, it has a lot more chocolate notes, a lot smoother. Um, so, it was banned forever. 2007, again, the was lifted. They brought it up. They started bringing it over. And then St. George over in Almeida, California, started making their own absinthe. And it is very good. It is a little, it's pretty harsh. Um, all absinthe typically is harsh because it's so high in proof. And a lot of people have, and so it has this reputation of why it was banned, that people were losing their minds on absinthe because of wormwood and hallucinating and doing crazy things. But chances are, if you drink 140 proof of any type of alcohol, you're going to do some crazy things. So, absent, we love it. Morgan and I are huge fans of it. We're so excited to show you guys some things with this. And also, like I said, we're going to talk about Viacom Spirits and what they're doing uh, in Texas. They're the first Texas brand to start producing, to begin to produce absent in the state. And the thing about it is, it is a beautiful absent. It is something that I am quite proud of that's going to be on our back bar, hopefully starting next week. And they have some other products as well. They have beautiful liqueurs. The jazz, they have a jasmine flower liqueur. They have a beautiful elderflower liqueur. They have a cordial. They have bitter cordials that they partner up with Midnight Cowboy in Austin to create. Like just hands down, one of the best distilleries, not only in Texas, but probably in the nation. And one day, probably the whole globe. So again, thank you to Jessica for helping me out get this going. And let's go ahead and start dripping some absinthe. This, again, is a very traditional way of drinking it. If you've been in New Orleans, you probably have had, if you have, if you've been in New Orleans and, you, and you're into the whole war of absinthe, chances are you've probably seen one of these. You might have seen one with cast iron bottom, even bigger, some are even mounted into the bar tops, like especially old school absinthe bars or absinthe lounges. This one is mobile, pure glass, just keeps everything nice and cool. You want the water to be as cold as possible. That's why we decided to use really high quality, handcrafted ice, comes out of a climbed-up machine, freezes from the bottom up, and so what's happening is it's circulating the water while it freezes the bottom up. 
huge box, takes a couple of days to make it. And then from there, you take all that sediment from the top, it's all frozen, it kind of looks like the ice that you would get out of the free refrigerator or freezer at home that we always say try not to use. And so from there, they cut that off and they get these huge clamps and move it over, they cut it down the sides, cut it by hand, and they just uh, get, it to, uh, they get it down to us to share with you guys and to make sure that we are giving you the best cocktail we absolutely can with the most quality ice that doesn't overly dilute, it keeps its strength, it is dense, and it's just a joy to aesthetically pleasing, it's a joy that it, when it touches your lip and just like when your glass just comes down and you're like, I didn't even know there was ice in there, can you see it? So, I don't know if you can see the ice on, can you see the ice on there? That's... It's getting a little, it's getting all sw sweated up and yeah, makes that so, just. So, yeah, so it's full of ice. So that's like, that's what we want to do. So, and forgive me, I am new to actually preparing absinthe. I, absinthe is one of my favorite ingredients to use in all types of cocktails. But when it comes to preparing it, I've only been around drips a few times. So, and I've never really used it too much. So, bear with me. We're going to go over this. And we're going to start off with our opal. The opal is something that I am going to come around the bar and show you guys. How's that look? Uh, hold on, let me get the focus. Oh, shit. We good? Yeah. Okay, so this is Opal. So Jessica was telling me a lot about this and like, I'll just, it, and it's just so impressive. So this is going to be, so this is gonna be quite, it's quite impressive. So it's gonna be a wine, it's a wine distillate. They just, they, they, they still it and they steep it with 60 pounds of these herbs. They have these huge tea bags that they put into these vats and just let it macerate. And then from there, they distill it again. And what comes out is the opal. And it does, so it's not gonna have that, that famous green, tint, uh, that, that green color shining through it. But when we, when we actually prepare this, um, matter of fact, I got another glass that we can do this in just so you can see the color a little bit more and, and I'll bring it back up to the camera. It's just like that the oils will separate and the, uh, how do you say, how, with luge? Uh, I've always heard luge. Luge, yeah, that sounds right. Luge, and the luge is what we're gonna talk about in just a moment too. So let's get that going. Our apologies to anyone who can speak French. Yes. Uh, we're, I know I'm terrible at it, so <laughs> I will butcher pronunciations all night. But the thing is, we love absinthe. We actively love absinthe. So at least we have that going for us. <laughs> Have these beautiful crystal tasting glasses for our aperitif and our maros. So we're going to go ahead and just put a little bit in here. Just a touch. And so from here we're actually going to take it over to the drip. We're going to just add a few splashes. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. That is so neat. How? Oh my gosh! Did you see that? Oh my gosh! That is so cool. Look how beautiful that became. That was clear. That was clear like a vodka almost. But also, when you open that bottle, the fragrance just comes shining through. I'm gonna add a little bit more water just because I like the water ratios. You, you know, everybody likes people that drink absinthe have have their own ratios they like to celebrate. But look how beautiful that turned. Can you see it, Morgan? Oh yeah. Look how beautiful that was. That was, that was just crystal clear and those oils separated when we hit it with that cold water and now it's just going to be a whole expression and it is just packed with herbaceous notes like i mean the most generic is going to people would always go to licorice or anise but morgan and i we have really great conversations oh that's wonderful so we always have great conversations about how people that we try to introduce to absinthe, they always go to this excuse, I don't like licorice. I don't like the way licorice tastes, or uh, it, oh, it just tastes like black licorice. Or we'll they even go to anise. It's like, sure, we accept that. It is there, but use that as a threshold. Pass that threshold. So take your first sip, get that out of the way, and then go back in. What's next? And like, I mean, it's like just really great hints of like, I mean, it's like pretty much just, um, just a bouquet with everything going on. And I, I'm getting a lot of cardamom. I'm mean, I get a lot of citrus notes actually. And it's just like, there's almost like a sweet cream to it too. There's a lot going on with this. But no radish. Finally, I've tried something. I didn't do, I've been using radish as a descriptor, but I, I, I mean it when I say it. 
This is just a, a lovely expression of accent. The opal is delicate. It is. It has a, a nice viscosity. It is with the with the water dilution. It's quite sweet. It is not. It is not burning hot. Uh, what is the this is, so this is fifty five percent alcohol. So it's not it's not going down like that. But also Morgan and I prepared ourselves tonight because we know we're going to be drinking absent a lot of it. And we also want to thank Tom, aka Tom, for being here to help us uh, be our be our runner for when we forget something because of course we're going to forget. And also we started a, a little bit later than usual. So whoever's watching, thank you for coming in and sticking around. Um, Please like and subscribe us on YouTube because we will upload this over to YouTube. And of course, Venmo at Doug, Doug Blank, if you ever, if you please. The bag's right here. I was about to say, Tom, where's the bag? So we're gonna have a long episode tonight because we we do not want to miss anything on this absence. We are gonna miss stuff. Uh, will you? We, so we are gonna miss certain things, but we're gonna try our best. And anyways, this opal. It's brilliant. It's not burning at all. It's just a tremendous amount of flavor, a huge punch. I actually cannot wait to really start breaking into cocktails, but before that, we're going to go ahead and... It is worth noting that that is on the mild side for ABVs for absinthe. Mm. So if you're looking to get into absinthe, be aware. You're looking at usually a minimum of 60% you know, alcohol, 120 proof. Indeed. Indeed, actually, I'm pretty sure we're about to get into uh, some pretty dangerous territory when we get to the end boys. Yep. So, what do you say? I, I think we should do another one. Will you try? What do you say? Yeah, I'm game. Well, uh, you want to come over here on this side or whatever, and you can give it, get some nosing on it, see what you think before we even hit it with the water? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Everybody? Morgan? Hey, what's up, guys? A.K.A. Morgan, a.k.a. Morgan the Grouch. Just say a little bit. So I've heard people like uh, so, so. Most people that I see, I think it's like one part absinthe to six part water. Is that what the traditional or what people? I, I hear like one to eight, but I've I'm usually either one part to four parts of water, two one part to six parts of water. Okay. I I just as a matter of personal taste, I usually go one to four. Fair enough. I I guess I would too. Of course, there is the anise that's just a fact of life with absinthe. But get that out of the way and see what else you find. It's lots of beautiful herbs. It's definitely a very rich yeah. aroma. So hit with uh, slightly minty. Let's hit some water. So, a little bit this way. So the drip. I'm going to use I'm a new drip, so I like to do it a little bit slow. So yeah, notice how clear that is. I, and so it's just like, you can see the oil start to separate. It's quite impressive. And so, I mean, just like, think about like just 100 years ago, just being in a dark, dingy, absent room. Good? You say yeah. That? Right? Dark, dingy, absent room. And then you're just seeing this magic happen right in front of you. That is so cool. I am so impressed. And so again, it's a bunch of, it's a, like during that maceration process, a lot of these, oil, like so, so high proof alcohol, tell me what, tell me to your liking. I would think that should do it. Okay. Especially, especially with it being a milder. Cool. We'll go ahead and join back where you were and enjoy it. So back in the day, being a freaking, being an artist, I mean, just imagine just the inspiration you could even get just by watching this process and getting a nice hard buzz on and just getting another absent and just like watching the whole entire pa the pageantry and the ritual of celebrating absent and it is just so intriguing so i think that i fell in love with the ritual absent and kind of came around to the taste to say honestly but now it's something that i just don't ever see myself really going without whenever i make a lot of my tiki cocktails of course the zombie is the most notable for absent but some of my tiki cocktails i'll just uh i'll honestly just be going through it and working on it, and I'm like, it is missing something, and like a spritz of absinthe or herb sink, which is an absinthe Angostura split uh, created by Don Beachcomber. It, it is, uh, or the, the recipe, the idea was popularized by Don Beachcomber. Um, when I think about that, and you can put that almost any cocktail, it's gonna be great. You can even put a spritz of absinthe on a 
on just a really nice and clean, crisp daiquiri. You want to give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more edge, sharpen it up a bit. A spritz of uh, just some heavy duty absinthe will probably really be a great celebration for your libation. <laughs> celebration for your libation. Woo! And then, and absinthe, Jessica pointed this out to me uh, from Valley Crown Spirits, that the, the, the absinthe, she's like, just the, the buzz, like, like it, it is a cleaner buzz. It's like a clean distillate, it has all these wonderful herbs. I mean, alcohol, especially herbaceous alcohols, like absinthe and amaros and things are just so, like back in the old days, they were medicinal. And honestly, they still somewhat are, in my opinion. Like, you know, you're using these amazing products, these amazing roots, these amazing spices, and these amazing barks. And when you put them all together, and you put them into a, a, a to save, like all these monks were making it, making it probably, and just to save waste, they would steep it in high proof alcohol and extract all these wonderful properties because alcohol is a great extractor, especially high proof alcohol. And, and so they get, so to preserve it, and then that's what they kind of turn into medicine. And it's, it was like that for hundreds and hundreds of years. Modern medicine is quite new. So just think, like when you're when you were on your grandfather, your grandfather were like, you think they'd be joking, like give them a shot of whiskey or give them a shot of a of, of gin or something like that. They probably meant it because that's where they grew up as medicine. A lot of people just don't like alcohol because of medicinal taste. We always use the take the, the, name, the word medicinal in the cocktail realm. And this does have a, a medicine to it. And again, all these wonderful properties are just being expressed in these high proof liquors, but you don't chug absinthe. I mean, at the hardwood, we do have one boiler maker and it is called the blue and green. And it is a Lone Star Light with a shot of raw absinthe. And uh, you're only allowed two Per visit or two per day, and it kind of turned into this weird contest where people were just it's kind of like downloads. You gotta get 10 to get on the board, you got to have two the first time to get the book. From there, you can have, have one or two and add to your tally. There's no book, and also, I don't keep the score. It is, it is up to you guys to keep your score. And I think the person in the lead is we've been over two years, and people do slow down because it is kind of hard to do. Because two shots of absinthe in the night, and also after that, we're pretty much. We might give you like one more beer, but we are pretty much time for you to go home. Or just enjoy the rest of your evening, of course. So let's go ahead and move on. Now let's play around with this bad boy. Man, I'm so excited. So, Opal, it's going to be distillate, grape distillate, and then it's going to be steeped with about 60 pounds, I think our beverage is about a gallon, 60 pounds of herbs and a tea bag. And then from there, they distill it again after maceration. And from there, they distill it again. And what you, they provide in the bottle, that is what comes out of the still. And I cannot, I cannot, if you guys ever have a chance to go visit their distillery in Bastrop, it is uh, amazing. It is called, um, oh my gosh. Derelict Airship. Derelict Airship. I was going to say Airlift. I was going to say Airlift Airship. It's a little early for that. So let's check it out. They have, it is, um, a small space, but what they do in there is quite impressive. The still is like it's two in one still. Like they they created all these things. It's their own process, their own way. Like this all like whole. It's like this real quirky mad scientist approach to it, and it is jaw dropping when they start telling you about it. And this whole this whole adventure of creating this beautiful beautiful absinthe. So this is a cool glass. Morning, will, will you take this and show show them how this this and point out the bowl at the very very bottom. So if you look at this glass, oh, let's go ahead and readjust My that. bad. You're good, man. Get that readjusted. First of many little. Don't worry, you got a long night. You're going to have a lot of absinthe. Yes. It's a lovely glass there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was. And so the bowl at the bottom, if you looked at, look in, if you got in right here, where do you want to, is it good? Everything lined up? We got to rewind it up. Uh, uh, help me out, Tom. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. You want me to hold it up so they can see? The... So no, yeah. This, so sorry about that. More, I should have. I we're we're a bunch of little rascals, can't we? So if you look in the middle, we just point to that hole. It goes right down to the hole inside the glass that goes into this bowl. See it? See what I'm talking about? Yeah. One more. All right, cool. So that's what something that we're going. That's about an ounce pour. It is an ounce pour. We're gonna do an ounce of this beautiful. 
You see it? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, so we're going to take the absent spoon, put it on top like that. We're going to get near the drip. Can you see it doing the move moss around? No, you're looking good. Okay. Now we're going to take a sugar cube. And we're going to start a slow drip from the spoon. Yeah, nice and slow. So we're going to start slow to get that sugar really working. And so what's happening is that we're obviously starting the dilution process where it's dripping over the sh and sweetening at the same time and stripping over the sugar and over the down through the cracks of the spoon. Which it, So this is like this really beautiful spoon and it has whole pe preparation in it to allow the sugar to escape and water escape through and get into the glass. And so this is going to start clouding up again, just like in the opal, but it's going to be a beautiful uh, green, like a really, that, the green fairy is what they refer to it at in the old days. And this is exactly what we're achieving. You're like this nice, cloudy, beautiful, like neon green. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and pick it up a little bit. Because I, I do like my green, I, I like a little bit more water in my for sure. And sometimes you can even, just take the cube at a certain point and just put it in and stir it in, depending if you want some texture added to your cocktail and, or to your absinthe. And then uh, there's actually this, this old school like teeter-totter thing that I really don't even really understand how it really works. I guess the water just raises it. Is it called a dripper, maybe? Is that what it's called? You know what I'm talking about where, the, where, it, keep, where it goes, where like a balancing thing? Uh, I, it has little arms. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm just drawing a blank at the moment. That's so I'm blank, all right. So that, nice one. It has little arms and a little cup. Yeah. on the top and you put ice in the cup and your spoon is still over the glass like that yeah and then the the little cup itself has a teeter-totter and your sugar's on one side of the spoon so when it does one side it hits the sugar and then the other side is just water and then just okay. sugar it's, and then water it's called either a seesaw dripper if you're an ignorant american like us or i'm gonna assume this is french and just butcher it an absinthe uh balancier Balancier, that sounds nice. Balancier, ho, ho, ho. Sounds good. I'm into it. <laughs> Dude, I... So Morgan and I have been talking about this happy hour, and I've been talking about it for doing it for a long time, probably since, like, episode, like, two or three. And I really want to do a long one, again, to celebrate absinthe. And also, I love absinthe, and I want to drink freaking absinthe. And I'm so pumped that we're doing this. Let me just add that in there. Give it a quick stir. Probably go with, I mean, probably does need more water. Look at that. Just milky, creamy. The nose is just so profound. I love the way that this uh, bubbling cauldron over here is just. Hello. Look at that. Dude, so this is the Green Fairy. This is what gets people to cut their ears off right here. So there's a whole myth, that's the whole myth, that this right here caused people to go crazy. This. But I can tell you what, might be true. So there's something, there's an active ingredient, oh my gosh. This has like a huge citrus nose too, chocolate. It's gonna have, um, What am I getting there? I'm getting a lot of car I'm mean, getting caramel. I guess caramel is just on my mind. I'm getting like bitter orange flavor. Even. That's not citrus, probably. Yeah, no, you're I can definitely see that. Get a lot of getting creams in here too. <laughs> That's nice, man. So it's, how long before your tongue goes numb? I don't know, but I don't know. I mean This is special. This is wonderful. I mean, I could see how you could just drink yourself to insanity on something like this. I mean, it's not the wormwood. So, wormwood, grand wormwood, uh, it's, it's something as as absinthium. What's the first word? But that's where, where the name absinthe comes from, the ingredient wormwood. So, another fun fact is that when they did the band, they are saying that wormwood was the active ingredient for people to lose, to hallucinate. But the thing is, I think there's a one, I, I think absent, or wormwood translates to vermouth. 
in, um, in I think it may be a Germanic language, and it's like vermouth, and so, and that's where the word vermouth comes from, and vermouth has never been outlawed in the States, and one of the main botanicals in vermouth is wormwood, so it was kind of just, uh, there's obviously some underlying tone, some agenda for getting this stuff banned. And uh, the grand wormwood is Artemisia absinthium. Artemisia absinthium. Cheers. And so this is the Green Fairy. This makes you think of a quote from uh, Screaming Jay Hawkin. Oh, ain't you one? Be gentle of my heart. I just know where this is going. The night is young. We're not working. And we have DDs. <laughs> and Tom is here too. And Tom has, is working. He's here to save us from ourselves. I want to thank Amanda for watching the bar for us. You got a full house over there, so we really appreciate it. Not that we're by the bar, we're in a secret location. And Jessica Graves says that, yes, that was the, the old German word for wormwood is vermouth. Oh, cool. I knew it was Germanic some way or another. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for all these, all these blessings and all these gifts. We are so, so excited. And I want to know, what do y'all want to dive into next? Y'all want to keep, uh, y'all want to do another one so y'all can try it? Or you can try it? I never turn down apps. Right, you know this. This is sticking with me. I can't help it. This is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, drawing a blank. I'm trying to figure out what exactly I'm missing. There's just so much going on. Um, Chocolate, I'm getting a lot of, definitely in chocolate, getting um, some bark, some like nice wittiness coming from there. I'm trying, trying to figure out what kind of, kind of bark I'm getting. Um, getting a touch of cinnamon, nutmeg, you know, all the, all the baking spices are there. Wow. Woo. Sorry for you. Woohoo! Tom, 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 Tommy, 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 Tommy. What do you think, buddy? Tom just over here to go and ask me how to make a cocktail. I guess I could have just told him, but I'm like, no, not now. We're out. <laughs> like, how do you make an Occam's razor? Like, right now <laughs> with my friends. Hmm. This is so fun. This is like a fun way. It's like just the whole experience. You know what I mean by the ritual? It's just so fun. Like I just imagine being in Paris, like Ernest Hemingway, Ernest Hemingway, uh, Gertrude Stein, and just like sitting there, like just getting, and just getting hammered on absinthe. It's being creative and just making and just and just having like intense conversation with brilliant minds. This is just too cool. I am so excited right now. And I hope you like the green lights. Uh, it's I didn't think it would, I don't think it's gonna be taken away from this whole the whole aesthetic because you know this, these these absents oh that even works. It's too cold. Boom. It's brilliant. It's okay. What's up, man? So and a fun bit of trivia to add to this. You're talking about the uh, medicinal side of things. Yeah. Actually, uh, the earliest record of Wormwood being used in a medical context goes back to uh, ancient Egypt around uh, 1550 BC. Wow, that's so cool. Thank you, Morgan. Morgan, what do you think? You want to get you want to? I put I put a little bit extra in yours on <laughs> on accident, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more time until you hit a little bit faster drip. This is too cool. I know that everybody's gonna be watching this be like. If he says it's too cool, one more time. So again, please take some time to go over to my YouTube channel. Just search Doug Blank, like and subscribe. It's really gonna help us out because the goal is to get to a thousand followers. So from there, when we do this, we can do it directly on YouTube Live, and then we just have it uploaded directly there. It's just make streamline this whole experience because of course we do this every Friday, and we are fueled by Ranch House Spirits. And again, please come and check us out at the Hardwood, and let us make you a beautiful cocktail. Let us make you something with a gorgeous absinthe like we have right here. We would love to serve you. So, and uh, Jessica, again, with some uh, wonderful information, we actually kind of screwed up the time on this. 
Oh, okay. Because uh, 5 to 7 p.m. is known as the green hour. Green hour, yeah. So we're starting a little late. We're we did start a little late. The reason we started a little bit late is just uh, we're a little short-handed, so we wanted to make sure we got everything lined up. And the green hour, apparently, is the inspiration for what we now celebrate as happy hour. Oh, so God, that's delicious. Isn't that nice? I don't think I've ever had one that's, that's that rich and creamy. Before. Yeah, it that's... has like, it's really great mouthfeel. It's just... Uh, it, this is a great, this would be, this is a well-rounded absinthe, and I would actually go as far as to say this would be a great introduction to absinthe for, any, for anybody. So, and the, 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 the fact that it's just made, it's made an hour and a half away from here, just, it just, there's so much, that just makes my heart pound even harder. This is just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful bottle. Mmm. I would love, I would love to drink this every, every damn day. Seriously, it's just brilliant. So again, absinthe is higher proof. Got to, got to be careful with it. We do have a cocktail in here provided by, excuse me, by the Crown Spirits that is called the Green Goddess. We're gonna build that in a little bit, and it's just, it, it brings the ABV down. And Jessica is a really great way to describe. Uh, of talking about why it's a why it's a great cocktail, a good way to get people to try absinthe, get that ABV down, and make sure people, you know it's almost like a, a high proof beer in a sense, and it's um, something that we're definitely gonna do because it's gonna be a good way for somebody that doesn't want to tie tie on a hard, clean buzz, and just something of you know a nice brisk walk home after a cocktail or two. The Green Goddess, which we're going to perform for you guys, is going to be top notch. Matter of fact, let's just make one. What do you say? That'll work. Bye bye. That's it. And we're gonna dive into the bottle and the whole design of the bottle too. I just it, it because everything obviously everything inside the bottle is the most important. But this they they put so much thought and care into their product that we're definitely gonna talk a little bit about the bottle design and it is just aesthetically pleasing and it just is a perfect way to present. The beautiful, beautiful absinthe. So, the Green Goddess, we're going to do a recipe provided by Jessica Lee Graves. And also, she has a wonderful, wonderful band called The Lovelies. Please check them out on Spotify if you have time, or everybody has time to Spotify. It, it is one, when I first, this is a great story. When I first moved back to Austin, this is about eight, nine years ago, me, and I, I was always walking by, I lived on the east side, but I always walked by Hotel Vegas and stopped by and see some shows. And I heard these two lovely, angelic voices in the plucks of ukuleles coming out of Hotel Vegas. And I just felt like I was just lifted off of my feet and just like floated in to Hotel Vegas. And it was the lovely Jessica Lee playing with her partners and her, her band. And it was the most impressive impressive sound I've heard in a long time and they have, they have the most darling songs, the most the sweetest approach and they just uh, amazing patterns, amazing amazing etiquette and just a wonderful it's just a wonderful sound. You should definitely check it out. Check out the lovelies on Spotify as soon as possible. So I'm gonna tell you about when I ran into her about about that kind of spirits too in a little bit. So first thing we're gonna need is our measure. Well, and then we're gonna take some shakers. All right. Oh, Tom, will you go into the cooler and grab our fresh, freshly squeezed juices and house-made syrups? Watch that. There you go. Let me just shake that camera again. My bad. No, it's good. That's not your fault. I should have. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it is your fault, Morgan. Yeah, I can live with that. Thanks, sir. And Tom, why don't you take our cauldron and pour some of that water off and add some more magic potion to it, if you know what I mean. No, no, what do you mean? Tom has been such a delight. Tom has been working at the hardwood as our bar back. He is, his, he is home from school. Now, well, of course, because of the pandemic and everything. But he is, uh, and also it's your summer break, right? Are you going to school still? He's going to school and it's a summer break, but he's down here. He has a huge passion for wanting to learn how to bartend. He's been such a great help, such a hard worker. And I want to thank you, Tom, for all your hard work, buddy. 
Well, I thought moving inside would take away the whole uh, race car effect, but apparently people want to just speed by her anyways. Okay. It's crazy. I just drink all the acid. I don't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's why I said, that's why we said we're going to do a two-hour one and just, like, and just do acid. Dude, I'm going to try my best to keep my shirt completely buttoned all night. Is that fan on? That fan's off. Don't turn that fan on. I want to sweat, baby. I want to sweat. We'll turn it off for you, Morgan. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so I always start the, um, I'm going to start with. 38 minutes in and we're already going downhill. Oh, I don't have any simple. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a ride. No, I don't have any simple. Ooh. Don't you that simple? I did. Sweet. <laughs> Come on, put that down. Oh my god, the table's first. This poor little table. Our poor happy hour table seen the other days. So, we're going to celebrate by the... With the green goddess, baby! <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and just build it with my time to go against the uh, simple syrup. We're going to do a whole ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed. All of our juices freshly squeezed in house, double strained. So get that so, when it, so fresh juice you always want to give a nice agitation to. <laughs> want to give a nice agitation to because uh, it will separate. There's no chemicals added to keep it consolidated. Alright. One ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And then we are going to do 0.5 ounces of absinthe. We're gonna go ahead, let's go ahead and do the I, I think I think it calls for the emerald, so let's just do the emerald, see, see what kind of color we can get produced from it. Three and a half ounce. <laughs> Damn, goes quick. I've been working on that cute little bottle for a little bit. Come on, baby. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah, Tom, we've been playing with that way to get back, buddy. Okay. Hey, sir. Calcium yep. simple syrup, one to one ratio. Did you use refined or did you use pure cane? Refined. Oh, I'm sure. Can't get anything past Tom. Tom's a man. So is Morgan, aka Morgan, aka Morgan Drush. So that's it for the ingredients of that. We're going to take a chill. We're going to take some handcrafted ice. And our thing is, since it's a lucky number 13, we want to celebrate 13th episode way of doing something special, having some amazing absent. So we are not using, excuse me, ice from that from uh, your local gas station. We're actually using our convenience store. We got our uh, fast food joints, but we, which we always say to do. If you cannot get quality ice, try not to use ice from your freezer. Go to your local McDonald's. Uh, go to your local Sonic to get your Pebble Ice, and go to your local McDonald's to get uh, their their ice because they put a lot of money into it. They put a lot of money to, to protect protect their products, like Coca Cola. Well, they don't want their the local waters to create crappy ice to ruin their product that they want people to drink all the damn time. So if you get their ice, they actually provide the water, and they are, sometimes they have like really great filters filtration systems, and it has some more it's a consistent ice. And you can, you, when you shake, you can create uh, context in the sense like, you know, you know how the ice works, like in the hardwood, if we have to use that ice, we know at what time of the, the shift, when the temperature is outside, we know how to adjust our shape to it. So, but we don't have that tonight. We're celebrating beautiful products with more beautiful products. We're going to use handcrafted ice from Fat Ice, and we're going to go ahead and load it up right now. much. So, we're good? Mm -hmm. So there's that handcrafted ice that comes from that climb ball machine. See how crystal clear that is? That's what you want. We're going to shake with this and we're going to go ahead and go ahead and dump in there and dump it all into a glass together. So we're going to do about a 10 second shake with this. Let's see if I have a, yeah, I have a glass on there. We're going to do a 10 second shake, 43 inches on top of the ice. Lock like tinge, very tinge, lock tight. We can do something like this. We're going to do a three point contact. So you have this high, high quality ice, you're going to put a little bit more concentration to how we shake. So we're going to make sure it touches the, the back. Try to touch the top, try to touch the front, bring it all the way back. Give it a nice aeration. 
help that lime juice emulsify, get that sugar to really combine all the ingredients and that touch of absinthe, which is very high in proof, to really sing through as well and, and join the whole entire party and the whole entire song and dance of this cocktail that we were building. All right, so 10 seconds. cube cup for this called the Collins cube. Don't have that right now. I apologize. But we are picking some up next week, so I'm excited about that. Let's work that down. Chill it. Keep that cool glass. Chill. That ice is quality, so it's not melting away too much, but we still don't want it to be out of hand. So I had a julep strainer around here somewhere. There it is. Thanks, sir. Just a strainer? Yep, just a strainer. Julep strainer because I forgot to grab a Hawthorne and a fine mesh. So I'll tell you what, we'll put it in this guy, put it back in this little short guy. Man, you see how chilled that is? Put it in there. Try our best to get as little ice shards as possible. And we should have grabbed another, um, there we go. Still some ice shards coming through. We should have double strained this, but that's cool right there. So their recipe does call for four ounces of topo. I'm a glutton for punishment. So we're just going to do, we're just going to top off, that's probably going to be closer to two ounces, maybe less. And I never thought about opening a bottle on live, Facebook Live. Why would I need a bottle opener? My bad. So, and their recipe does call for fresh cucumber. We don't have fresh cucumber. <laughs> I'm just realizing everything that we don't have. We have pickles. We do have fresh pickles that we make in house. We make our we make a beautiful pickle in house because we make. Let's just give it some citrus. Screw it. An orange would be beautiful. Why not? Orange and absinthe goes really well together. Let's give that a spritz. We're gonna go ahead and discard. We double we train that over that beautiful ice, so I don't think it would need a straw. So yeah, let's get this. Let's get this down here. Let's just a little more. Set sparkle. Sparkle's coming through. Yeah, I should have done this in the bigger glass too, probably. But my apologies, Jessica. But this is going to be good. I can't tell. Dude, that's pretty tight. It tastes like a damn. It tastes like a uh, herbaceous sprite. Strangely, I mean, in the most in the most complimentary of ways, dude. This is a great drink. This is something that you need to come in the hardwood and try. And forgive me, by the next when we when you come in here, we will have this dialed in. Now, Jessica, this is a wonderful recipe. For the first time you ever make it, right right here on our virtual happy hour with your boy Dougie. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I cannot believe how good that was. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want one? Sure. Let's do it again. Yeah. Let's take one more. <laughs> let's make one more and let's uh, take it, let's um, double strainer, please. All right, so we're gonna make one more and we're gonna do it with a double strainer. And uh, that's it. Go ahead. Dude, you're gonna freak. Dude, you're gonna freak out, man. Well, I also saw how fast that just went for you. That was like 
two sips gone. <laughs> I, I, I just never I just never considered absent in a spritz. And it is I always, well, you know, when we drink absinthe, when you and I drink absinthe, we just, we always, we're, we're trying to hurt, we're trying, we want to, we want to know, we want to drink it, we want to feel it, we want to taste it. And that was impressive. That was amazing. Wow. So, so good to make another one. <laughs> Doing two of everything night, baby. So absinthe was also, I mean, there's like so many cool stories, obviously a lot of, so one of my heroes, not necessarily because of his writing, but of his lifestyle, and maybe that is a bad thing to say, but Ernest Hemingway is one of my heroes, and one of his favorite expressions of spirit was absolutely absent. Absent rum, he loved everything. He drank a lot, and he has all these recipes. Blah, 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 bleed, bleed, bleed. I can't wait till we get to the top of the hour, get Morgan behind the camera so we can show y'all a beautiful cocktail that he came up with that includes some sparkle. Hey, Tom. What's up, Doug? You got a brand new hot mark strainer. And you got a huge strainer. That's great. Right. Brand new hot thirst strainer. And I'll happily take a pint, smaller pint mesh strainer, Tom. Appreciate it. Can't do. I give Tom, I, I ruffle Tom's feathers a lot of boys just kind of rip him, but he's doing an amazing job. I am so proud of him. And he's going to be one of the best bartenders, not just in the area, not just in the state, but in the nation when I'm done with him. So I think he's gonna go up, he's gonna go back to college, but I'm one of the best bartenders in the nation. So you're like, ah but uh, you run that Doug Plank guy again, huh? Hey Tom. Whatever. <laughs> That's fine. Those are your options. That's fine. Okay. Let's do it again. Tom, we still have for me in the sink. Yep. Thank you, sir. You got me uh, one of those bigger colony glasses? Yeah, by the time you're here, I'll be ready. what he's here for. Hey. He is doing a great job. I'm not kidding. So next time I'll see Tom, aka Tom, be sure to give him a pat on the back. Well, from, from a fair distance. Oh, and the hardwood's open. We're our booking reservations. Take when the tables are full. We are sorry. There's you can't come in. So we're asking you to call ahead. You can find our number on our Instagram and our Facebook page. So please call before you come ahead because we'd hate for you to drive so far to not be able to be seated. I mean, if you want to wait around, we can figure something out, but and maybe, you know, wait for a guest to leave. But people have been staying, like getting tables and staying for a couple things, or, and staying for a couple of hours. It's been really, really, it's been amazing. It's been a humbling experience. And every, I feel, it feels like a family, which it always has, but everybody's just really come together for the hardwood. And I'm just grateful. So thank you all. So please call ahead and get your table. Come try Green Goddess next week. We'll be doing them. I, I think this is just a staple now. It's a lovely, lovely drink. All right, so this is a bigger column. Yeah, that's going to be way better. So this is a bigger column. This is an actual column glass. The other one is more of a high water glass. So, so my gun is stirring. The way you can hear it clinking around, that's a telltale song that Telltale sign that you don't know what you're doing. I thought I knew what I was doing, but you don't want your eyes to make that much noise. You want to be as quiet as possible. It's typically why they have mixing glasses and things like that. Take the tip of that off. Bazinga. Cool. So let's go ahead and chill. So what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and chill the glasses with beautiful ice. Oh, look at that. So we're gonna, that, we're gonna let that chill. Get our shakers. We're gonna build this again. Let's go ahead and start the cheapest, cheapest ingredient that we have it. We're gonna do one ounce simple. Syrup, one to one ratio, refined sugar. One ounce freshly squeezed lime juice. I'm so excited for you to try this. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> 
All right, we're going to do a half ounce of this beautiful emblem absinthe. All right, let's get some cubes in here. The cubes are tempered pretty well because they've been sitting out for a little bit. They're still kind of frozen together. Just break them up with a mat. Break them up with a muddler! Cool. God darn it. Yeah. So the shaker full of the pan craft. Put up. Okay, so we're going to do, achieve that shake again. So like with the tank of ice, you can actually wait. You, you can put it down and you can talk for a bit. I mean, you're not going to wait for 30 minutes, but you know, you, got, you have a good 30 seconds to catch up, like get things in order, take your, take your glass and strain off that extra excess water, you know, things like that. So, man, a cucumber would be, would be amazing in this drink, for sure. But that spritz of orange is going to be just fine, just to brighten it up a little bit. I'll help the brightness. Okay, so three-point shake, great ice, wonderful ingredients. Put a lot of effort into it, so put a lot of effort into your shake. And shake like nobody's watching. So what I'm doing right now is, if you had a, a better strainer, this is a tea strainer, that's what the deal is. So it's finer, it's like super fine mesh. You want like a, a looser fine mesh, so there we go. So those ice shards and the, the leftover, it's like citrus and stuff are like cramming up in this fine mesh. So at the heart of you, we don't use these. I guess I guess it's in, I guess I had I might have bought these on accident or something. Didn't you just buy new ones? I did buy new ones. Thanks for bringing me a new one. Where are those? I don't know. Would you like me for me to go find them? Thank you. Thanks, Tom. You're the man. Huh? I can't help it. I gotta bust it. Okay. This is a freshly open bottle. We use smaller topos because it get it's less opportunity for it to go flat. So that's this is gonna be closer to four ounces. Maybe maybe three. Get a mixing spoon. Just incorporating gently. Like if we had that Collins cube that I was talking about, it's like one cut that filled up the entire glass. That, that issue of like juggling all around wouldn't happen, but that's fine. I am so jealous that you're about to get to drink this one. That one I had is amazing. I already know this is going to be incredible. Go ahead. All right. Oh, bro. I'm sorry. Go. I'm just excited for you. Damn. Isn't that cool? Good call. Green goddess. Yes. Where it's at. That yeah, that's excellent. Yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's a beautiful drink. Man, we can just do a whole episode about green goddess now. So yeah, later episode, miss the green hour. I know, we were thinking about doing that, but like the sun sets a little bit later, have set up this whole setup. This really wants to have a lot of fun. Get the whole cauldron going, put the mystique over it. Allow the green fairies to surface and just express throughout the night just that whole mystique of and ritual of absinthe. Where are we at on time? Uh, we are at. How many times? Uh, eight eight fifty seven. Oh, cool. 
So I'm just going to talk your ears up a little bit more, and then we're going to get Morgan behind here to work on one of his cocktails that he's uh, been really getting at for, man, when did, when did, we, when did we agree on you coming in? Two weeks ago? Two, three, something like that. Yeah. So I've been kicking around some ideas, and I stumbled across this one and just went, ooh, yeah, let's yeah. do that. So, and again, we want to thank Violet Crown Spirits for giving us, helping us out with this beautiful drip. And of course, they're a wonderful product. And I want to thank them for putting so much love and effort and so much care into this wonderful spirit. It is just, I love through my veins, literally. Do you need shakers? All I need is a measure. All I need is a measure. Sup, bro? Sure. Oh, you that? Dude, you have a phone charger that's saying 20%. Yeah, phone charger right here. Tom, will you get a, an extension cord and figure out a situation over there? Or actually, I'll do it. I'm going to be out from behind the camera, and you're going to come over. <laughs> you need a shaker. All right, guys. So Morgan's going to come behind and celebrate absence with you guys. Uh, Morgan, we, so Morgan, we did bring a bunch of... More about his question absence. It's not just if we work, you know, if we need to fill some time, we're gonna taste a bunch of different types of absence. I'll tell you about different brands. Um, so if you, I'm gonna let him decide. However, you built this recipe, which which absinthe you decided to use, up to him. Blah 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 blah. Okay, and I'm gonna find a situation to keep this phone charger for you guys. All right, guys. Open this outside. More gonna open this outside just in case. What else? We find an extension cord for is that what's that yellow one plugged into? This? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Interesting, Tom. I really like this setup. I'm pretty excited about it. I want to thank my mom, my beautiful mother, Roberta, for a hand drawing the sign accent for me. Isn't that cool? Please Venmo us. This Venmo, when you when you Venmo us, it funds the virtual happy hour. That's what it does. So please keep that in mind when you're doing this. And are we watching this? And it really really happens out. So I'm gonna let Morgan get behind here and uh, rock out this cocktail. And, he's gonna, and I'm gonna probably get him to tell you guys a little bit about the wine, the wine aspect and the wine relationship to absinthe. And also. Well, here he is. We got your white more when we come back by your side. Right. Come on in. Going with the double end Morgan and his, Morgan is uh, the man over at Gold Breeze Winery in Daryl, making a wonderful product for you. And I can't wait for him to show you what's going on. All right, Morgan, all yours. All right, so I'm going to do what's known as Death in the Afternoon. Uh, very popular drink. Um, it was uh, supposedly created by uh, Mr. Blake's uh, patron saint, Ernest Hemingway. And it showed up in its written form. Was, it was published for the first time in 1935 in the uh, drink recipe book called um, So Red the Nose, which I love that name. Super simple drink. All you need is absinthe, champagne, preferably a coupe glass, and a measure. You're ready to rock. For this one, I am using uh, lucid absinthe, uh, predominantly because it's one of the easiest to find and it is extremely affordable. Uh, it's it's, it's a good absinthe, especially if you're new to absinthe, it's a good jumping off point and kind of, you can find more refined taste from there, but it's a good place to start. So, for this, you take an ounce and a half of absinthe. Into your chilled coop. From there, you will fill with the uh, champagne of your choice. I am going with uh, a Wycliffe Brut. Uh, 
picked this up here locally over at Ranch House Spirits, so yeah, shout out to them. They're an awesome company, and they do a lot of uh, sponsoring of the, of the virtual happy hours, so definitely go support them, good people. Get here. And as per the instructions of Mr. Hemingway, add one jigger of absinthe to a chilled coupe glass, and add chilled uh, champagne to the point of the proper opalescent look of that. And then drink three, as per his instructions, drink three to five slowly. <laughs> All right, then get, you, get over here. All right, my man. Well, I mean, okay, so we're going to do a little bit. The, the phone, we got to charge it, so we're going to pull the mic off. Provided by my sister Diana. I love you. We're going to get it back to you, I swear. But we're going to lose a little bit of sound quality. We're going to talk louder. We're just going to get the phone charged up, and then we'll put the mic back in. Hey, Morgan, will you say something? Yeah. Just so I can test, say. Test, can you still hear us? Are we good? Do I need to be louder? Do I need to? Uh, yeah, if y'all dislike me, <laughs> if y'all can hear us, let's. If you can't hear us anymore, let us know. Die. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyways. Nobody's nobody's saying anything. So I mean, whatever. Well, it'll, it'll take a second. Yeah. Yeah, give that a try. All right. See how you, how you feel about it. Can you say it again? Can you say it again, uh, Death in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. It's named after one of Hemingway's books. Woo! Boy, that's good. It's stout. It's stout. It's good though. Leave another one, my man. Can I take this with me? Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 sparkling does a great job. Oh, thanks, Shay. They can hear us. They can or can't. Without the tea, can. Okay. Just checking because there is a substantial difference okay. between those two. What was the pour on that? Oh, uh, ounce, and a, ounce and a half of absinthe. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then fill your coupe glass. Uh, if you're not using a coupe glass, you're going to want to add uh, four and a half ounces of champagne. This is serious, man. Yeah, no, this drink doesn't play. It's delightful, but uh, it will kick your butt. Uh, I got Daryl to kind of test this out with me, and that was his first experience with absinthe. <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting experience for him. He uh, described, he felt like he had jo what he called joker face. <laughs> he had no reason to do it, but he felt just that his lips just starting to curl up further and further, and he had no control over it. All right, so Jessica says, Ernest Hemingway drinks hero heroic quantities of things. For my version, I don't do an ounce and a half. I like. I do like an ounce to maybe three quarters of an ounce. I and I call it an afternoon delight because it's just a little death in the afternoon. I love that. That's so awesome. yes, that is a great way to tame this bad boy down. Yes, um, I must. You don't plan on doing anything that afternoon or evening. Or a very dedicated drinker, I would suggest going with the milder variant of this cocktail yeah that's a bold that's a bold drink but guess what i'm gonna drink it hey morgan what do you think about what do you think about talking a little bit about about um the wine industry and its role in in absinthe oh yeah well it's kind of funny because you know us winemakers were apparently a bunch of sneaky bastards because um Around the turn of the 20th century, um, absinthe had really taken over, particularly in countries like France, and it was kind of it had become kind of the drink of choice, pushing wine, kind of knocking it off of its throne, as it were. Which, needless to say, the winemakers and grape producers not too keen on that. So, as we've mentioned earlier, with absinthe being a very uh, having a notorious reputation. Um, there was a, uh, a panic, much like um, you know, something we obviously laugh about now, but in the, you know, the 1930s in the U.S., uh, Reaper Madness. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure everyone's seen that movie and laughed. 
there was, there was a legitimate panic because of the supposed effects of absinthe. It was actually referred to as absinthe madness. Yeah. And of course, the uh, kind of served as just the uh, kind of catalyst for absinthe to go on and be banned actually occurred in uh, Switzerland in, I believe it was 1905. And um, a man killed his children and wife. Oh my gosh. And um, during the trial, his attorney, as it were, used um, the defense of, oh, he was under the influence of absinthe. He was mad because of this drink. And so that was, so that led to a petition and of course a lot of behind the scenes you know the wine industry kind of pushing it along you know, between 1905 and then finally 1915 most of the pretty much most of the major european countries had banned it with um france being the last holdout so kind of like uh so like just added that that gruesome that gruesome yeah, murder that, to that, was, that was like the thing that everyone just could point to. Like, you know. So Jessica dabbled with me. Jessica dabbled that a little bit. What you're saying that story mm -hmm. yesterday, and she and she she mentioned to go with what you're saying. But he also had four glasses of wine, two two glasses of brandy, had a couple of shots of this, but had two shots of absinthe, and then had this like absinthe. All right, yeah, that's it. You well, know, and, and everyone and to this day there you still hear you know popular myths. Of well, when you look at the people who were, you know, absent drinkers of the time, artists, poets, musicians, um, you know, in many cases, literally starving artists. Yeah. So, yeah, when, when basically most of your income goes to booze, particularly absent drugs, you know, not a lot of food. Yeah, it's going to play hell with your body, and there are going to be some negative side effects eventually. But that's obviously a cue, not the uh, what normal consumption would do. Yeah. And actually, what was interesting, um, the uh, ban on absinthe in the United States, it wasn't absinthe specifically. It was uh, the, they, what they were banning was the wormwood. Yeah. Which, because uh, the wormwood does contain a component of... Um, Again, I'm going to butcher the name Thujone, which actually is a psychoactive chemical and in high enough doses can cause all kinds of crazy side effects. Indeed. Convulsive. Yes. I think it's referred to as a neurotoxin because it causes that convulsion. Convulsions. Yes. Uh, convulsion, seizures. Uh, at a high enough dose, yes, it can cause death. And actually with the, uh, the legalization of absinthe back in the U.S., which occurred, as I've said, in uh, 2007. Um, it's legal as long as it's under 10 parts per million Thujone. All right, so we're just making things up now. Thujone, Bujone, what's uh, I think these are all made up words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Morgan, thank you so much. You want, yeah, cheers, man. Tommy, behind, why don't you come say hi to everybody? Everybody wants to know what you look like. Right? Guys, this is Tom. <laughs> Strong ass drink. Oh, God. Well, you know, this ain't always food. Oh, it's delicious. Just. Very good. Woo! That one's a swift kick to the testiculars. Oh, boy. Ah. So. <sighs> I'm going to move over here. We're going to get back into. We're going to get back into the groove things. So now I'm going to make one cocktail, a classic cocktail, referred to as the Sazerac. Sazerac is this, not many, I don't even know of any other places that have a cocktail, like a city cocktail. Will you uh, fire it up, bud? Oh, yeah. Come on, Tom. Put it in front, put it in front of that, walk by with it in front of the camera. Come on, man. There you go. Yes. <laughs> All right. Ooh. What do you need to grab? Give this to uh, Panda. Oh. Or, 
Yeah. I was going to keep it on ice. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do a beautiful cocktail that has to do with two of my favorite people. We've already talked a little bit about Jessica. But the first time I met, when well, the first time I met this other person it had to do with Jessica, I went to one of my favorite bars that you hear me talk about here all the time, Small Victory. Small Victory is in downtown Austin. You never know it was there unless somebody told you. When you walk in, it is just the most beautiful bar, shotgun style bar, but with the most talented bartenders in town. And they are humbled and excited to teach you how to drink and make you a beautiful cocktail. So one time I went in there with a friend, and I look over at the bar, and I see Jessica, I'm like, excuse me, do you happen to sing in a band called The Lovely? So she's like, oh, of course. I don't actually, I do. And she was so sweet. Uh, to, brought me into her warm embrace with her huge, beautiful smile and her just amazing, amazing presence. And then she's like, oh, I'd like you to meet Jennifer. And I met Jennifer, who owns the wonderful brand that we celebrate all the time. Where's my brand St. Louis? Where is it? It's here somewhere. It might be in my car. We go in my car. Brandy St. Louis. I have a bottle here. It's in my car. Forgot to bring it out. Like I said, it wouldn't be a virtual happy hour with your boy Dougie and Morgan, aka Morgan and Grouch, and Tom, if I didn't forget something. So, but by the way, so, and they both introduced me to their beautiful brands. Uh, the absent from Jessica and Jennifer's wonderful brand St. Louis that we talk about and celebrate all the time here at Virtual Happy Hour and of course in the hardwood. And if you go to my channel on YouTube, you will absolutely see the video of the mint julep that we use brain St. Louis in. I did bring it. I hope it's found. So I really because we're gonna make it a, a classic Sazerac. We're gonna just use two amazing products to bring to incorporate everything together. And I just would be Heartbroken. It, oh, frick. Morgan, come talk to him. I'm going to find him. Have you seen the Randy St. Louis? It's in, my, it's in my car. I know it is. I know, where, I, I know exactly where it is. Tell me where it is. It's in the back of my car. The back. The back. Oh, back. back. Okay. And then it's just boiling. There's some tea cocktails that call for, uh, no, that. Mysterious substance. Mysterious substance that's ruining my precious table. But anyways, so, and then they, so they brought these beautiful spirits and they presented them to me, or they yeah, presented them to me. We just all had great drinks and had beautiful sidecars. And just got to, just got to tell me all about our absent. I got to express, she gave me an expression of her absent. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Brandy St. Louis, baby. Mwah. Mwah. Two powerful, amazing women behind these brands. And I am so grateful to have them in our presence. Both Texas based, both hardworking, both, both of these are best, hand, hands down, best you can get. Brandy St. Louis. Does an amazing job keeping the price point down. But if you heard the the links that Jennifer went through to create this blend and this bottle and the and everything that she has sacrificed to bring this to us behind the bar to give to you, you would could not believe that you can get this for between 20 and 30 bucks depending on where you're at. So please check out Brandy St. Louis, celebrate it with me, celebrate. Emerald Absinthe, Robotic Crown Spirits, distilled by Tom. Who distills this? Derelict Airship. Derelict Airship. And we're going to make a solid Sazerac. We're going to hand it off. I'm going to have a sip and we're going to hand it off because we're going to just keep. So now that we're in our last hour, we're going to start banging out some cocktails that use Absinthe. Okay, so we're going to need a chilled glass. Or a chilled mixing glass. Where's my mixing glass? Gosh darn it. Oh, we got that mixing glass, sir. So typically I would already have this in the fridge, but we're, you know, we don't, we have this little guy right here, so not that much room in there. So we'll just attempt to get this going. Uh, oh, cool. We have this beautiful chilled water right here. I can't forget we have this drip.
Yeah, let's get you some water in here, help that melt down. Cool. So we're gonna just chill down. We're gonna chill, we're gonna give a nice chill to our mixing glass. So always remember that your hand, your body produces a tremendous amount of heat. So if you so if you have to keep hold this to keep this glass going, so be it. But try to get your hand away from it so you can spin, so you're not adding extra heat to it. Did that just pop? Weird. So it's gonna give us a nice chill. I apologize. If you're we in a proper bar, this would already this, that would come straight out of a freezer, and you wouldn't have to worry about that. So we're gonna spill that off. Chilled enough for what we're trying to do. So we're gonna get a beautiful. Tom, where that rocks glass go? Did you bring one? We got any rock shots, Tom? Yep. Cool. So from here, pretty much. So I was going to build it all in here, but you can build, build it directly into the glass. So we can do something cool. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take this ice back out. Sure cube. In the bottom. Do some paste showed right here. So the reason I'm doing it like this is because we want to do it neat. So. Honestly, we were trying to chill the glass. It didn't work out too well. We would like to chill the glass just so this whole process, it would just keep every, all your products cold. But in the sense, none of these, all, all these room temperature any, any, anyways. Yeah, perfect. So I guess that was a fleeting attempt to do that. So my apologies. Just think of, just imagine just being in a um, beautiful bar with, be with amazing top-notch chilling equipment, like freezers. So we're just going to build it in here. So, Peychaud Bitters. Peychaud Bitters actually hails from New Orleans. It is a huge part of their tradition, especially when they do the Sazerac. Every argument I've ever gotten to over Sazerac really always boils, like everybody I mean, always uh, boils down to spirits and ratios, but the argument never, never brings in Peychaud Bitters. Peychaud bitter, Bitters is a must for a Sazerac. That is part of the tradition and it's something that you just should expect to be a part of the process. And you know what? I was actually thinking of a uh, thing doing this. So what we could do is get this ice. And you, so I guess in this situation, we get this ice and maybe in this glass. Right now, I get that chilling. And I have an idea for just a moment. It's probably not my idea. Everybody knows about it, I'm sure. So from here, we get the facial beers, the shirt key. We're gonna take Brandy St. Louis and we're gonna do an ounce and a half. So a single, if you will. Right in. So again, if this was all chilled and every bottle was chilled, it would be like super cold. Like for this cocktail, when you're blending and stuff, being cold seems to be the best way to go. But at the same time, you always think about, you know, when you drink things cold, it does mute. Uh, the expression of your spirits or your wine or your champagne or anything like, you know, but so like sometimes like you drink warm, warms like, oh my God, I don't want to waste this taste because you are trying to mute some tones. So I'm actually not too concerned about it being ice cold because both these products are so beautiful that, that a warmer expression, if you will, won't, won't affect it by any means. So, but we're just going to give it some chill. Cool. So from here, we will just take usually have tongs and stuff for a different location. I apologize, so we don't have necessarily everything we need. And we would typically pack this with ice, but we have, oh, I guess we can. We got everything right here. I'm always so used to being shorthanded with a good quality product. So right here, we're gonna do that. We're gonna put the blade in. We're gonna get the blade snug under a solid piece of ice, and then start to stir. Chilling and diluting is what we're achieving. We are going to use a julep strainer at the end of this process. I always say you have nothing to do with your hand, just put it on your back. You could probably be shaking a cocktail at the same time if you're a busy bartender, but for right now, just put it on your back. It's, you know, we might not have the most class in this situation, but we're going to try our best. Yeah, it needs a lot. This needs a lot of work. That's like high 
that fat ice, that, that handcrafted ice, that, that Climbell ice is super, super duper cold. Like, so it's gonna need some time to help out with it. So we're gonna spend a little bit, we're gonna spend some time on it, man. You see the actual mixer getting frosted, that's a wonderful sign. Typically we have this bowl of chilled, out, chilled water with ice just to make sure that it's uh, staying cold. But again, beautiful product in here, so it not being extremely cold is not really an issue. So there's a julep strainer. Julep strainer is going to place upside down, wedge between the glass cube and take and pull your thumb back. I mean, excuse me, your, your finger back and hold the handle back to the glass, secure it, and then as calmly and politely respect your spirits and pour it into your would-be chilled glass. This is a double rocks glass, so it's a little, it looks less than what it should be, but I assure you that is a lot of quality booze. So in South Texas, we actually serve our Sazeracs on ice just because it gets so hot here. And But the thing is, how fair is that to say? Because it's great in New Orleans. And uh, it's great in New Orleans. New Orleans is even more humid than here, so the ice melts quickly. So if they want to serve it neat, we'll serve it neat. And that's what we should respect that process. And I apologize for this not being the most gorgeous Sazerac of all time. And not the, But I want you to know I respect the Sazerac. And I honor it as an amazing cocktail. We make ours with, uh, with a brandy St. Louis and <laughs> emerald absent. I forgot to spritz the glass. We'll do the spritz over the top. My apologies, guys. Typically, you spritz the glass first. I feel pretty good. This is the goal, though. We, oh my God, the, every, the whole entire experience just came out. Maybe we'll start spritzing at the end because it just blew all that paste showed and all of that brain St. Louis like right into my face and it was just incredible. So anyways, your orange wedge, six inches up, three inches back, give it a nice expression. Reason being, lighter oils are gonna fall or fly forward, coat the glass, sweeter, lighter oils, more, more robust and expression of orange. Bitter oils are gonna fall away and not, and not add to the bittering because we want to control this cocktail as much as possible. We're going to discard the, hey, we're going to discard nice. the swath, but probably the worst Sazerac you've ever seen built. And I, but I just want you to know, I do respect this cocktail, and I do respect the ingredients I put in there, and I hope that that's not lost on any of you guys, and I can't wait for y'all to try one at the hardwood, so let's get this up. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Cherry, oak, spice, um, herbs. It's just like all the generics, but they just done so well. It's like, you know, when you get a donut at, if you get a donut at HEB, or not, well, HEB has great donuts, but if you get a donut, you get a donut at a freaking 7 Eleven, or if you get a donut at your local bakery. Like, you know what I mean? Same ingredients in the sense, but one's above the other. Is this ripping loud? So, Morgan, that's your name. Well, hey, it's a classic for a reason. That is a, that is a fantastic expression. I kind of actually like that we did the brain sand, I mean, excuse me, the, the uh, Emerald Absent Blast. This thing is popping. Our cauldron's going kind of crazy. It's kind of getting everywhere. So, I don't want any trouble. We're just here to party. So, yeah, you'll have to have, get your uh, cauldron tech on that technician. I wonder where our phone is. See if we can put the mic back in? Mm. Oh, Does it have the charge status on there? Uh, no. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I just want to get that mic back in and give you a little bit better quality. I don't know how these newfangled things work. Hold on. Oh, this is going to be a huge risk. Where are we at? Where are we at in time? We are at, uh, it's 9.27. That's what I said. All right, we can go a little bit longer without the mic. Dude. So there's a cocktail that I created that was, I used both, again, used both these brands, not for this next cocktail, but I had a beautiful tiki hour and, uh, with Cavalier in the east side of Austin, and I'm so grateful that they invited me to come and shake up some of my own ideas. 
for Tiki, and it was Indiana Jones themed, but I came up with my version of a Dr. Funk that I just cannot, cannot think I could go the rest of my life without ever have, like, just, just having on the menu. I'm so into it, went so well. And so let's go ahead and do one of those. Who wants a Dr. Funk? I'm probably gonna do two of these. So, we got two different types of so, so Jessica introduced me to the idea, which is weird, and I feel kind of, uh, it's like one of those moments of like, kind of a noob, like you feel like a noober, a newbie. She, and she just like, just like told me about this pairing of, of root beer and absinthe. I'm like, of course, yes, all those spices, the sarsaparilla, that just like the wonderful, the spices like in a sense of like, you know like, I might say it, radish notes even, in like cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, uh, just allspice, all those things just going through and this being super crisp with the, uh, and, and nice, like just perfectly sweetened and just a well-rounded, like a root beer is always well-rounded and it's absent if it's done right, it's well-rounded, herbaceous. It's like these things are made for each other. So I made a Dr. Funk variation. Dr. Funk is a classic cocktail. It's been around for ages in the tiki world. It is uh, going to be grenadine, an uh, equal part lemon to lime. It's going to have some black strap rum in there or Jamaican black, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, you can probably, if you don't, can't get, get those, you can do some some more, or if you want to keep your price down, you can probably do some darker amber rooms. I don't see why not. I just want to have that viscosity that we're trying to achieve. And then on top of that, it's going to have, the original recipe is going to have seltzer water or soda water. The thing is, why use the soda water? We, you know, oh, and then absent spritz, and, and like we did for the Sazerac and that soda water. It's like, well, you know, I was uh, just thinking about it, and she told me that. I'm like, oh my God, I have this grenadine I've been working on forever, and it's this little bottle right here. And this is a pink peppercorn grenadine that we make in house. Uh, fresh squeezed pomegranate juice, and it's going to have pure cane sugar, and it's going to be, a, you know, a touch of salt in there, kosher salt in there, and then a tremendous amount, believe it or not, of pink peppercorns. Pink peppercorns are nice and floral. I always say that pink peppercorns smell the way they look. Just pink and bright and lush, floral, and just wakens you up. It's almost like a smelling salt, but in the best of ways. And so I made this beautiful grenadine. I'm so proud of it. Splash of rose water, of course. But I, and I, I've learned the hard way. Rose water, a little bit goes a long way. I'm not talking about a half ounce to three ounces or four ounces or five ounces. I'm talking about a half ounce for like a gallon. Like it is very bright and expressive. So with that said, fill this Dutch is fun. And also, I, I, the, when it comes to the absinthe application, it's usually referred to as a spritz, so like for no. I like to use it in the actual drink. I like, in my zombie, we don't spritz it. Like we actually put it into the drink. So they're a little bit more boozy, but I'm really excited. And so what we're gonna do is do a quarter ounce of the pink peppercorn grenadine. Super viscous, thick, lush, tart, of course sweet. That spice that you're looking for, florality, and the pink. And honestly, like with that pink peppercorn, you, I could probably even take out the rose water. It's so floral. Tom is here. Okay. Oh God, what? We weren't going to make it much longer. Thank we're, you. We're going to do a half ounce of lime and a half ounce of lemon. So you're probably wondering why lemon and lime. I'm, well, if you're a bartender, I guess maybe you would think that. So they both have two very, two vastly different pH levels. Lime happens to be on the better side, in a sense, and then lemon has to be on the sweeter side. So we're just doing that just to change that, get, just to change that pH, balance it up. Keep it. We're not going to put pineapple. We're not putting citrus or anything like that. So the grenadine is actually in the sweetness. The tartness and the, and the pH balance is going to come from the citrus, obviously. The black strap that we're going to use is Jamaican pasta from Hamilton. It's going to do a, pretty much all of the combination. Well, of course, they're going to be sugar. But before we do that, we're going to take our emerald absinthe. Man, 
Actually, let's see the opal on this one. This opal is so beautiful. We haven't talked about it near enough. Oh, yeah, let's do the opal. It's like pleasant, it's fragrant, but strong enough to pierce. So let's, we're going to do a, uh, and we can do a little bit more than that. So screw it. Let's do um, a heavy quarter. Let's three eighths. Three eighths. Three eighths of that beautiful opal absent. And I just love that's called opal absent. It just calls my name. I love it. So let's add that black strap. In the black strap, we're going to do an ounce and a half. Black strap rum, that Jamaican funk that you're looking for in your rums, especially in Jamaican rums. And those over hyper uh, over overproof rums, like that, that that molasses, that freshness, that almost like there's like almost like in, in the best ways, there's a little bit of rot. You know, like the way you think of a blue cheese, like a little bit of rot, but not in the same way. But it's also good. This is this black shot. They take so many distilled rum to make black shot. They everything that's left over in the pot still is referred to as dunder. We'll actually take that beautiful dunder and add it back to the bottle. And we'll get this. I'm going to pour it high. See if y'all can see it. It is dark, and it, you can see the sugar content in it. Just dark and black. So it is black hot still rum. When they put that dunder back in there, it gives it nuttiness, a, like a nice carbonation in the sense of like burnt. It's like, so it's like this nice carbon tone. It's a burnt nuttiness, a lot of macadamia, a lot of cashew, uh, butter, a lot of brown butter notes coming off of this, you know? So like it has a lot, just a lot going on. And we are going to do it in a footed Pilsner glass. This is, so you cut the hardwood, we're finally using glassware to get the hardwood. We're washing them well. We uh, just had an electrician in today. We, we, our kitchen is closed right now. We have an electrician. Redo the entire electric work in our kitchenette. And tomorrow we're bringing it back in. We've got some cooks hired, training. We're all proud and just excited to serve you. But with that said, foot of Pilsner glass. This is an ancient foot of, foot of Pilsner glass. Heavy. This is probably a quarter of a pound easily. Fill it. Say it's heavier than that. You think it is? Yeah. It's heavy. It's a heavy glass. It looks like it. Yeah. Sounds like it too. Yeah, watch. <laughs> Anyways, love this glass. So from here, we're actually gonna Lewis bag some ice. So Lewis bag is over there. Yep. the cauldron. We need our technician. <laughs> this is a Lewis pack. You got it. So we're not, we, we decided to use quality ice for everything we're doing. And granted, we do like pebble ice and we get it from our Sonic. Uh, but this is designed to crush ice. So what you do is you take your ice, huge block of hand, look at that. How beautiful is that? You put it to your bag. And then you wrap up your bag, and then we don't have to play. Oh, I guess we do right here. Well, I, I we do on that table. Yeah. So we're gonna beat it up. So you beat it up on the table, and that's pretty much it. So if doing that, I'm gonna get my whip going. Man, that is awesome. 
I am so excited about this. So, man, the Dr. Funky Jones. This is my variation of the classic Dr. Jones. And again, oh, we had splash of root beer. I'm about to say, what am I missing? So we have St. Arnie's. So I'm actually going to drink some off the top right here. Hey, we're going to get a paper straw. Oh, man. It doesn't even need the soda. But it's just like, just so good. In that absence, it's just singing through. But we're definitely going to add some soda. Just so, like, just to help it out even more. Man, the pepper is coming through from that grittening. Those citruses are freshly squeezed, so they're just singing the song they're meant to sing. There's a smaller glass, so I should have cut down the portion size. Mmm. And you put the soda in there yet, and it's still so good. Sorry, Morgan. Oh, so St. Arnold's Root Beer. The one that we did in, um, the one that we did for the event was actually with, um, should we that mint? Yeah, it should be in there. Yeah. Oh, cool, it's right there. It, the, one that, the one that we did for the, for the Tiki Night was actually with the Vita Root Beer, which is amazing. But St. Arnie's Root Beer is, our, is regional. They actually make it in Houston and not bad at all. You know, get your mint with that. Mint, if you beat it too hard, if you smack it in your hands, the beautiful mint expression will be in the palm of the bartender's hand. We don't want that. We want you to have it. The sorry fragrance so much, and if you beat it too much, it will become vegetal. And it will actually not be what you're looking for in your drink. Let's give it some. Beautiful swap of orange that gets to brighten it up a little bit more. Take a toothpick, wrap that up, put it right there. Boom, toothpick with orange right there. Then a beautiful, beautiful orchid. So let's take what we have one, don't. Lime wedge, upside down, light on fire, don't have it, no big deal. But let's check this out. Look at this freaking drink. Let's see it. Ah, frick. All right. So this is the Dr. Funky Jones featuring Emerald Absinthe, from Bada Crown Spirits, and some root beer, and some pink pepper corn grenadine that we make at the Harborwood. I gotta make you one. <laughs> I gotta make you one. I accept this. This is amazing. Man, honestly, if people watch this, I don't know how many people watch right now, but if they get on YouTube and watch this, if they start coming in, like all we want is absinthe at the hardwood, and all we want is brandy, and all we want is tiki drinks with brandy and absinthe, I mean, I would be ecstatic. Really would. Oh my gosh. I'm going to make one real quick, and then I'm going to make one more cocktail. I've got absinthe and pineapple, it's amazing. I don't care if we run over 10 o'clock, we have to make a cocktail with pineapple because absinthe and pineapple is an amazing expression. Cool. Suits me. <laughs> All right, so let's build that again. So we're going to do a quarter ounce of the pink peppercorn grenadine. <laughs> Half ounce of lime. <laughs> Half ounce of lemon. <laughs> My dreams are coming true. I'm getting hammered on absinthe on, on Facebook Live. We've been talking about this for months, <laughs> for over three months. Living the dream. All right. Quarter ounce of, uh, you want to do with the opal? Yeah. yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, I'm right here. Hey, I don't know if y'all seen Uncut Gems yet, but y'all have to, especially if you uh, love the word opal like I do, you gotta watch Uncut Gems. We're gonna do a head, what did we do on the last one? Three eights. Three eights. So if we use the emerald, we would actually probably do a quarter ounce because it's so high in proof, and the higher proof alcohols permeate well through your cocktail. Okay. So let's add the black strap. And a half. Yeah, it's a 
lose a drink, bro. Frick! Frack! That's what we need, boys. Need some of your Lewis bag, some ice. Still got some. Still got some? Okay, cool. Let me do this in. All right, good. All right, whip shake for 10 seconds with some beautiful handcrafted ice. This is going to be, so this is a more modern TV glass, so it's going to be more reasonable with portion size. I'm not going to have to drink half of it to get root beer in it. Woo, nice and cold. Man, that feels good. When it gets super icy in your hand, you can barely hold it. It's so, oh, it's exhilarating. Oh, it smells so good. Just nutty. And just pep and all that spice from that pink peppercorn. And then it's going to have all that herbaceousness from that absinthe. Again, high proof spirits tend to carry more flavors because they extract more in the process of being, uh, just, they extract more from their ingredients. So like, you know, you always hear people talk about making limoncello and stuff like that. You always think of everything to do with Everclear. You're like, oh man, Everclear is too strong for me. It's like, yeah, that's, that's the point. I'm gonna top this bad boy off with some, oh, St. Arms, man. Root beer, I'm so excited for you, Morgan. I'm so excited for you. Where's those straws, Tommy? Tom Baham? Um, I don't think Tom likes me calling Tommy, so I'll, I'm trying not to. I can have the, screw it, you get an order, that's all you get. Yeah. Try it. Show the, show, the, show the guest. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. I have no idea. Mm. That's good. What do you think, Morgan? Well, I feel like we've been on long enough that I can get away with saying it. That's fucking delightful. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, man. Mmm. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, oh, no, okay. We got one. What? Viewers. One? one? Okay. Right now. Who cares? Hmm. This all goes on the YouTube channel. So, we're just going to keep rolling. Stand up there so I can watch them anytime you like. All right, so we're going to do, uh, what time is it? Uh, it is... 9.45. 9.45? Cool. So, I guess one a time for another to make this pineapple cocktail that I want to make. And then from there, we are going to just sing our praises and thank all our sponsors and everybody. And then we're going to get out of your hair. Uh, we just need... Oh, man. What? I got this cool little glass, too. I didn't even think about that. So all I need is a, uh, the, a short Columbus glass again. Like the, the highball glass. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Hmm. Cool, so I'm gonna start building one more cocktail. I have a cocktail called the Golden Idol that I created. It's super, super pineapple. And it's with uh, pineapple rum, which I have right here. But the thing is, I always did it with um, pineapple tomorrow. But I just had this brilliant idea of just doing it with uh, some absinthe, see how it would go. Because absinthe and pineapple, just personally, me trying together, just sing so well together. They harmonize so well. The tartness, I mean, excuse me, the sweet and acidity of the pineapple is just plays off all the tartness and or bitterness of the absinthe. And of course, absinthe is a touch sweeter than you expect from any other. Uh, is that technically a liqueur? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's still a liquor. Yeah, right? All right, so let's go ahead and build this bad boy. Will you give me a solid, Morgan? Will you crush this up in that loose bag? Yeah, right, about to get loud again. Yeah. Boom. All right, so Morgan's going to get loud in that loose bag. Tom's going to hate me when I tell him he has to run back and get some... Uh, Tom's gonna hang me like that, so I'm back and get some new good.
Beautiful. Keep it over there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our measure. We're going to do a quarter ounce of orgeat. And we make in house almond milk, sweetened, some toasted nuts, a little bit of cashew in there. And then from there, we're going to take a half ounce of lemon. And then we're going to take an ounce of fresh squeezed pineapple. Alright, fresh squeezed pineapple with my Tom. Tom, we need nutmeg in a grater. <laughs> Please. Do it. Do it. Oh yeah, because uh, absinthe is bottled with no added added sugar, it is considered a spirit as opposed Noted. to a liqueur. Noted. All right, so I did that. I got that, and let's go ahead and get our absinthe in there. We're actually using emerald. We're gonna do a quarter ounce. Okay, we're right. From here, we're just going to do a whole ounce of pineapple rum. This for good luck, got a little bit more of a splash. Beautiful. All right, Tom, I'll take that from you right here, bud. I appreciate you. Okie dokie. So, put a little bit of a rock in there. Just need one. We're going to do a whip shake to emulsify everything. This is a drink that I'm calling the Green Idol. The Golden Idol is like strictly pineapple for the most part, some more jot and lemon. And but with the, when I add the, uh, when I add the absinthe, it's called the Green Idol. So pretty much we're whipping this until we pretty much just almost dissolve that cube. Because we're going to get that pineapple super frothy. Then that'd be completely dissolved though. Nice. Where's that Lewis bag, my man? Sweet. Thank you, sir. Woo! Get some of this hand cracked fresh crime bell ice in there. You're gonna probably need that right back more, but don't go too far. Get a Hawthorne strainer with an open gate. Open gate meaning you just want to keep it kind of high. Because it's a handcraft ice or shaking one, so not too much come out. And whatever does come out, that splinter, doesn't really matter because it's quality ice. And this is crushed ice that we did on top of it. Mark, man, please have a little bit more of that ice. Look how beautiful it is. It's not really green. Huh? It's not really green. What does it matter? You'll know it's there. They'll know it's there. Wow. Okay, and so from here, we'll get a paper straw and some freshly grated nutmeg. So when you grate nutmeg, you want like to you want kind of open hand, let the nutmeg in your hand, move the grater, not the, not the um, nutmeg. More, more control, more efficient, looks better. Not that green. That's what he gets when I give me a paper straw. Got him, Tom. Don't you ever embarrass me again. I'm just kidding, Tom. That's pretty, but that looks so freaking good. All right. All right, guys. My version of the green. I, this is my version of my own cocktail, the Golden Isle, but with Absent. Where are we at, Morgan? Uh, we are at 9:52. No, 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 oh, oh, yeah, no. You're you're dead center. Good job. So yeah. So this is the this is the green idol because it has that emerald absent. Let's give that a shot. Man, absinthe might need to be in every drink. And especially when you have an expression like emerald absinthe is amazing. I am just so, so, so into this. Y'all got straw taste this. Uh, Jessica, thank you for everything. Thank you for helping us get this going on. Another, again, another shout out to Brandy St. Louise. Ooh, yeah. 
dude, that is so good. That this is uh, that pineapple, like that freshly we, we we freshly squeeze our pineapple here, we're freshly juice us. You don't squeeze pineapple. So Tom's grandma gave us a Vitamix from the 1960s. Looks like something out of the Jetsons. And I have this dude back there whipping up pineapple and straining it for your use of the hardwood. So please come to the hardwood. Let's try give you the green idol. This is one of the best drinks I've ever had. Jessica, I can't wait to make this for you. And everybody over at Violet Crown Spirits, thank you so much. Enjoy their absence. I can't wait for you guys to come in and try all this stuff at the hardwood. Reservations are preferred. And I, 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 it's not reservation only, but we are just booking up so quickly. I suggest you call ahead and get your reservation, please. We would love to serve you, love to take care of you. Thanks again to Ranch House Spirits for fueling this happy hour, lucky number 13, where we celebrate absent. And you know, with your guys' donations to our video and stuff, keeps this thing rolling. We're gonna upload it to our YouTube. So, couldn't see it tonight. It's graduation night, so we have lower viewers, which is cool. And before we go, I wanna say, Ainsley, my niece, I love you so much. You are so important to me and so special, and I'm so proud of you. You do, you have done nothing wrong in your entire young life, in my eyes. I'm sure you've been to a party or two. So be it. But I just want you to know I love you dearly, and you have such a bright future. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to hold that light and help and guide your way as best as I possibly can. I love you. I miss you. And I'm sorry I couldn't be at your graduation tonight. So anyways, <laughs> cheers, guys. I love you. Thank you for watching another virtual happy hour. And uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers.